Are there unbaptized people from other religions or atheists, you know, no, no background at all, or dropped out Catholics, you know, or dropped out other Christians from other, uh, other traditions, or people in the pews who never knew they could have this personal relationship with Jesus as Lord. Yeah, that's great. Now, I know you have a little video, you, I mean, not, not just these teaching videos, but a little video explaining your uh, discovering Christ. Right. Yeah, let's take a look at that video and then come back. And let's talk more about what it really means to be a disciple and how the average person can reach out and help others. Great. Why are we here? What are we doing here? How do I find true fulfillment and happiness in life? It made me question things that I never thought to question. It's basically the good news of Jesus Christ packed into this, this nice seven-week course. They lead you through why Christ is that thing that fills you up. That God-shaped hole is the size of the Grand Canyon, and it's like throwing marbles into it when you're trying to fill it up with other things because it's intended for God himself. It all was about just the back to basics of Christianity, who Christ is, why he died for us, and how to commit your life to him. We are not saved by the information that the Gospels present, but we need to believe it in such a way that we are making a personal response to it. Dave and Father Eric do such an awesome job at bringing the importance of making Jesus the center of our lives. The talks especially and the stories that came with it, but most, of, uh, most importantly also, the small discussions that we had. You and I were created for community. We were made to be in relationship with one another. You're going to get together with the people at your table. You're going to introduce yourself and get to know each other. You're going to hear the talk together and share a meal together. The biggest thing over the Discovering Christ course was being able to really commit myself to Christ um, in a really personal way. Discovering Christ is not just about discovering Him and walking away, but discovering Him and also continuing to rediscover Him and live like Him to um, try to get better every time. It's made me look for establishing a relationship with Him instead of just, you know, doing the checklist. Now it's more about how Jesus is the center of my life. Dave, you know, that was an inspiring video, really. I mean, I mean, such a diversity of people testifying to meeting Christ through the Discovering Christ uh, video series. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a privilege to be involved in this and see the grace of God working in so many different types of people. And this was at a parish where it was just the people who wanted to come. This wasn't staged. Wasn't the, staged. This was you know? who was there. This is <laughs> yeah. what they wanted to say. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's awesome, really. Yeah. You know, seeing old, older people, younger people, mixed races, I mean, it's just really, uh, really very encouraging to see yeah. how the Holy Spirit is blessing this, this tool. And there, there's such a hunger, you know, and it's not just in the pews, it's out there. Yeah. You know, if, if, if we can just reach out and tell people the truth that there's a God who loves you, who's made a way for you to come to him and empowered you so you can live a whole different life, yeah. you know? Yeah. Who's going to do it, you know? Yeah. He's calling all of us as Catholics and as Christians yeah. to tell people there's a God who loves you, who's made a way for you in yeah. his son. Yeah, we, we've talked about the importance of people surrendering their lives to the Lord as you shared the beautiful story of how you did that. And we've shared now about this wonderful tool that can be used in a group setting. But I know that what you're leading people to is holiness and evangelization as a way of life. That this isn't just something that they do when the video series is running or when the parish is doing it, but this is something that's part of their way of life. How, how would you describe how evangelization can be part of the way of a Catholic's life in just yeah. everyday ways? Yeah, well, I, I think it really means returning to what Jesus called us to do. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of radical, like read the instruction book. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. He's called us to be disciples, to be followers. And somehow we've gotten to this point in Christianity in the West where there's this disconnect. You know, how, how does all the truth of what Jesus promises for us in life that we find in the Gospels, in the New Testament, and seen in the witness of the lives of the saints, 
How does that, how is that disconnected with the ordinary daily life of Christians, yeah. you know, who, who say they adhere to Christ in their lives, yet there's this big disconnect. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is because people think that there's different categories. I can live as a Christian and basically do certain activities and certain programs, you know, on top of a busy lifestyle. Yeah. Or people say like, hey, hey, being an ordinary Catholic is good enough for me. This discipleship is, that's, that's, that's too much. Now, you were sharing with me when we were talking previously that every, that this 200 and, well, tell me. Tell you know, you know, so over 200 mentions of disciples in the Gospels and in the New Testament, only two or three references to Christians, and they always refer to being disciples. So Jesus is basically saying, I'm calling you to one thing. That's it. I'm not calling you to ordinary following me. I'm no. calling you to follow me really. Really. Yeah. What yeah. I'm really calling everybody to is to be my disciple. And that was a pretty radical thing in the New Testament, wasn't it? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I mean, that was really, you know, reorienting your life around the Lord and doing what he asked you to do. 24 seven. 24-7. Yeah, 24-7. Yeah, my and life he, is not my own, you know, yeah. to live is Christ, to die is gain, you know. Yeah. And, and, and some of the, like, models of discipleship were the rabbis would have disciples and yep. they, the disciples would move near them, maybe yep. move in with them, would yep. watch what they're doing, would kind of serve them, would just kind of order their life around them. And, you know, Jesus isn't physically located to a particular environment, but he's everywhere, but he wants his people everywhere to be focusing their life on him and getting up every day, like you said, you kneel down and you say, Lord, my life belongs to you. I, I, I'm ready for what you're going to send me today. And the, the expected things and the unexpected things. And That's it. give me the grace to, to, to please you today with how I live yeah. my life. Yeah. 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 Whatever comes, I'm yours. Yeah. Good or bad, difficulties, blessings, whatever it is, it's all under his lordship. Yeah. I belong to you and I want to follow you. Yeah. I want to be in a mode of being teachable, following Jesus with others, with the church, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. with brothers and sisters who say, yes, we want to yeah. surrender our lives completely to the Lordship of Jesus and continue to be teachable, yeah. to be transformed by the power of his Holy Spirit together. Yeah, and the, and the relationship with each other is important because remember when Jesus was told, hey, your mother and brothers are outside, and Jesus says, hey, this is my mothers and brothers, you know, the ones who are doing the will of my father are my mothers and brothers. So when we surrender our life to Jesus, we're entering into a very significant relationship with others who are surrendering their lives to Jesus. And we're really brothers and sisters in the Lord. We're fellow disciples and we need to support each other on the journey. And I think one of the one of the marks of discipleship today has got to be you gotta be connected to other Christians somehow. Absolutely. You, you gotta be you gotta be with people who also want to follow the Lord. You gotta be with people who are gonna encourage you when you get discouraged, to uh, call you back to prayer when you drift away, yep. Uh, yep. to just stand by you when you're going through trials in your life, you know, yep. and yep. who yeah. want want to be together also to help others come along. Yeah. You know, as we grow, yeah. we're helping others to grow. And we, together we want to say, we really need to be able to reach out. We're yeah. chicken hearted, you know, yeah. the whole idea of us as Catholics getting out there is tough, but we together, this is what Jesus has commanded us to do is continue his mission. Yeah. And I, and I think as, as the culture gets more hostile to living as a Catholic, as, as it gets more hostile to people who even would dare say, I believe this is true, a lot of Catholics who thought they could do it alone, a lot of Catholics who are kind of like lone Catholics, as it were, you know, this is private, you know, yep, yep. you know, I don't really need to, you know, relate to anybody. They're going to find out that in order to persevere as a Catholic today, we really need to be in relationship with others who want to follow the Lord like, like we do, too. And I know we, we were blessed way back 45 years ago to be told about the importance of small groups. Yeah. Yep. You know, and, and you told me the other night when we were talking that you've been in a, a men's group for many years. I've been in a men's group ever since 1964. And, and uh, you know, it, the, the composition has changed over yeah, the years. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, it's really important if we're not going to be picked off by the evil one, if we're not going to be deceived by the devil who's always looking, particularly people who are really wanted to follow the Lord, the devil would really like to kind of send them down a sidetrack or hold them back in some kind of way or not let them kind of do damage to the kingdom of evil by evangelizing. So I, I would just encourage everybody, you know, to get into a small group, get into a Bible study, get into a prayer group, get into a men's group, a women's group, go to a men's conference, go to a women's conference, just get connected with other men and women who want to follow the Lord. Amen. That's yeah. right. Well, David, 
I don't know where time flies. Time flies <laughs> when you're having fun. It Even is, when you're not having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, time is flying, yeah. But anyway, our, our good friend Peter Herbeck has written a booklet called Light in the Darkness, and we'd like to tell you how to get it right now. Friends, we're living through difficult and challenging times. The church is in a fierce battle. In the words of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, man is pushing God from the human horizon, and as a result, the light which comes from God is disappearing and humanity is losing its bearings. In this moment, it's crucial that we hear the words of Jesus who said, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I wrote this short booklet to help you lay hold of this precious promise from Jesus so you can have the strength and the courage you need to be a light in the darkness. To order your free copy of Light in the Darkness, you can go to renewalministries.net or call 1-800-282-4789. Dave, I, I got to tell you, it's just been really delightful to reconnect with you. You know, we, we, we do stay connected. I'm a donor, incidentally, to Christ Life, and I encourage you all to support Christ Life. You know, go to their website, ChristLife.org, and support the good work that they're doing. Uh, but it's just been delightful just to, to go over the story a little bit about how the Lord's worked and the challenges we're facing today. We're not resting on laurels from past years. No, we're no. pressing ahead, forgetting what lies behind. We're pressing forward to see what Jesus really has for us today. I wonder if you wouldn't mind just at the end of the program here, just to take a few minutes. We just have less than a couple of minutes just to, to talk to the folks or yeah. pray for the folks yeah. or whatever's on your heart. You know, I, I, I met Ralph in June of 1971. Wow. And Ralph was doing a seminar on union with God and daily personal prayer. Mm. And after this conversion experience in March, this is June, just a couple months later, you know, I heard him talking about how important it was to have a daily personal prayer life. And it was one of the foundations of having a lifestyle of following Jesus. And what we have to realize is Christianity is no different than if you're learning an instrument or trying to better yourself in a profession where you need a coach well, we've got the best coach ever, Jesus, and we need to be in contact with him where he can give us grace and we can make effort to lean into that grace. And so I just want to encourage you, you know, if you're at that point just wondering, there's so much more for all of us if we stay in a place of being teachable. I don't know it all. I don't have it all together. At 65 now, I'm at a point where I, I want more. Hey, we're, we're Christians under construction, but it is so good to be under construction yeah. rather than under destruction. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. On the way. On the way. Following good to be on the Jesus, way. Following Jesus, you know? Yeah. Yep. So I, I just encourage you, give your life to Jesus and to following him daily. Give yourself to being 24-7, regardless of how busy your life is underneath it. Let it be the Lordship of Jesus Christ in your life that's leading you. Amen. Thanks very much, Dave. Hey, we're here every week, same time, same place, the choices we face, ready to encourage you, support you, and strengthen you in following Jesus and sharing Jesus. Amen. Thanks for watching Northeast Showcase on Converse Access Television.